understand the root cause. I, being a doctor, we don't believe in symptomatic treatment. We believe in trying and finding out what is the cause and killing the germ. That's a better treatment. What is the cause of terrorism? The experts say that the cause of terrorism is injustice. When injustice is done on a particular group of people, when wrong is done on a particular group of people, they tend to retaliate. And that is the only cause of terrorism. And when we realize that whether it be the 9-11, the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York, whether it be the 7th July, the bombing in London, or the serial bomb blast, 93 in Bombay, or the recent bomb blast on 11th of July, whether it be the thousands of people killed in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Gujarat, in Bosnia, whether it be in Palestine, in Lebanon, we find that behind them, the main cause are the politicians. I was wondering that when I landed in UK, that why were 21 young Muslims arrested? The government said we were keeping track on them for several months. Many people I met who knew these people were arrested personally. They said, impossible. They can't be involved. What we realize, that the people wait. When should this news come out? At that time, Israel was attacking Lebanon. Thousands of people were killed. The Britishers were objecting. So then you have a diversion. 21 Muslims supposed to bomb the airline are arrested. It's a bigger news, so people forget about thousands of innocent people being killed in Lebanon. <laughs> Same thing in India, Kargil. Any problem politicians, talk about Kargil, talk about the enemy, Pakistan. Diversion, politics, whether it be in USA, whether it be in UK, whether it be in India. The major cause are the politicians. We know that our country, more than 60 years back, they were ruled by the Britishers. And they had a policy of divide and rule. More than 50 years back, we got freedom from the Britishers. But unfortunately, they have left, but they have left the policy behind. And our Indian politicians, they have adopted this policy of divide and rule. They adopt this policy of divide and rule for the vote bank. <laughs> from records, we come to know that the country which has the maximum rights anywhere in the world, it is India. If not daily, at least once a week, we have communal rights. This great country of us, so many great religions are there. Maximum rights, communal rights. And the major cause, almost all, directly and indirectly, they are the politicians. For the vote bank, for the power, for the money. They engineer these things. Otherwise, normally, I have met non-Muslims. It's my job, it's my profession. I am a student of comparative religion. I keep on meeting different sorts of people. Generally, the common Indian, irrespective whether they're Hindu or Muslim, they would love to live with each other harmoniously. They would love to live peacefully. We may have our differences. We don't want to fight. But it is these politicians. It is these politicians who engineer hatred amongst different religions so that they could fill the vote bank. And you see almost all the rights that have taken place, indirectly or directly, they are the cause. We know that a few years back, there was a political gimmick. The Babri Masjid and Ram Janbhumi issue. You know Babri Masjid, Ram Janbhumi issue in Ayodhya? I would like to know how many of us Muslims and Hindus knew about Babri Masjid and Ram Janbhumi before the politicians made it a gimmick. How many of us knew? I had never heard of this Babri Masjid. And when I asked the common Hindu, he had never heard of this. Only after the politicians made it a political gimmick, people knew about it. And we know on the 6th of December, 1992, they wanted to have a big procession, a gathering at this site. The Supreme Court had explicitly said that no gathering anywhere close to the disputed site. A group of politicians, they make it a political gimmick of Ram Jan Bhumi issue and the Babri Madhid issue. They want to gather on 6th of December. The ruling politicians know very well that they have the Supreme Court backing. They could have easily stopped the gathering, easily. But then they think, if I stop, I may lose vote. So they let the gathering take place. <laughs> the gathering takes place, and then they say, spontaneously, the thousands of cars were gathered there, spontaneously, the Babri Masjid was destroyed spontaneously. 
If you know, there was live recording on the various satellite channels. We know that with Trishul and Nathis, how can you get down a structure? Is it possible? No. They had planted explosives with this pre-planned act that planted explosives. Anyone can see. You don't have to be a specialist of military. You can see it with your eyes. That explosive were planted, and that's how the structure came down. Can the structure come down with Latis and Trishuls? Maybe George Bush saw this. 6 December 1992. That's how he had conducted the inside job of 11 September. <laughs> Time does not permit me to speak about the inside job. That requires a lecture by itself. Inside job of 11 September. Many Americans have spoken about that. Maybe he saw it and he got the idea that let's conduct in New York also. Later on, what happens? This emerges into riots. Throughout the country, there were riots. It is the largest riot after partition in the whole country, where tens of thousands of innocent human beings were killed, mainly Muslims. Who's to blame? The innocent Indians. They are instigated by the politicians. Fight. Kill the opposite religion people. Instigated, innocent people, they get instigated, and they do the act. We know that even in Bombay, one of the cities that was maximum affected was Bombay. Even during partition, the riot that took place in Bombay was the worst in the history of Bombay. Even during partition, so many people were not killed as during the December 92 and January 93 riots. The police, if they wanted, they could have easily prevented the riot, very easy. With the backing of the reserve police, with the backing of the military, easily they could have done it. But they did not do it. Most of them were silent spectators. Some were good, they tried, but they were in a minority. Majority were silent spectators, some were party to it. I am aware that even the police is controlled by the politicians. So the police wants to do something, the politicians come in between. So the blame goes back to the politicians. Later on, the government appoints a single judge commission to appease the minority. And they appointed Justice Sri Krishna. It was famously called as the Sri Krishna Commission. And we know that Justice Sri Krishna, he was and is a devout and a practicing Hindu. But at the same time, he's an upright and honest judge, just like how we have Justice Suresh here. <laughs> an honest and an upright judge. The verdict he gave, it did not go down the throat of the government. It takes a few years. And he had analyzed the full cases of the riot. He spoke with the politicians, with the police. Individually, he visited 26 police stations, analyzed the records, spoke with the police officer, junior and senior, spoke with the victims, spoke with the media. And after a great deal of research, he presented, we have this damning verdict of Sri Krishna Commission. He even gave suggestions how can we prevent these rights? But, you know, it takes time. By the time this happened, the government says bygones are bygones. Because they know if they implement the report, they are afraid that they will lose the vote bank. At that time, to appease the minority, they appointed the commission. How many commissions? I don't know. How many, I don't know how many commissions have been implemented. I think Justice Suresh can tell. How many commissions that they appoint have really been implemented in India? How many? So here we know it is a delaying tactics. The innocent Indians, especially the Muslim victims, we have faith in the judiciary system of India. <laughs> if the politicians betray us, if our other citizen fellow members betray us, if the police betrays us in this country, we have yet faith in the judiciary system. <laughs> and we know that finally, most of the innocent people, whether they are arrested, etc. They are finally released. But the damage done to them, it cannot be undone. Later on, we come to know after a couple of